Hello everybody, my name is Teacher Rich, also known as Professor Rich, and we're here today to talk about mysteries of the world, also known as World Mysteries. Welcome to this stream today on Oxford Online English. This is one of our final streams. We will no longer be streaming in 2024. There are four of my streams left after this one. That's today, next week, the 23rd and the 30th will be my final stream on Oxford Online English. So, smash that like button if you like that news. Um, the direct the channel's going in a different direction, and that's simply the way things are. YouTube has not rewarded Oxford Online English in the way that we wanted. But thank you so much for your support. I've been streaming on Oxford Online English for over two years, I believe. It's either over two years or almost two years. Maybe it's almost three years. And it's been a lot of fun. I have enjoyed it a lot. And if you wish to continue to see me stream, you can. I stream twice per week on my channel, which is youtube.com slash Reach. You can search YouTube for English Teaching Rich, Rich English Teacher Live, and I'm sure you'll find that channel and I'll post it in the chat later, as this is the countdown to the end of an era of Oxford Online English streams. So, welcome to everybody today. How are you all doing? Hello there, Rinaldo Adao. How are you doing, Rinaldo? Hello there to Yogesh Atako. How are you doing? Alicia Khan, how's it going with you? Are you all right? Where are you from? I love sunshine, says hello mate, hello there. Uh, Cameron says hello, I'm from Azerbaijan and I'm new here. Welcome Cameron, welcome to our final four streams today. Hello dear English, hello Maria, hello Manuel, Julia, Nizrin, San and Tu Nguyen. So I will be streaming on my channel after this. And we'll be doing a bit of a follow-up to the lesson today, so do check that out. Do check that out. We'll be streaming after this. But today we're going to talk about world mysteries. So what do I mean when I say world mysteries? Let me show you some pictures there. So have a look at those pictures and tell me now in the chat, what do those pictures mean to you? What do you think I'm talking about? What are these pictures? What do they mean? What is the mystery here? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts there. Let me know your thoughts in the chat. Let's see what you think about this. Bermuda. The Bermuda Triangle. What is the Bermuda Triangle and why is that significant? What is significant about the Bermuda Triangle? What is significant about the Bermuda Triangle? YouTube drives me crazy sometimes. I'm trying to format a message here, and the bloody thing, it won't do it. No, it doesn't want to do it. <sighs> Mamma mia. 
fine. Fine, YouTube, I'll do it myself. There we go, done. So Manuel says, so in this triangle, it's like a black hole. Ships, aircrafts, and people suddenly disappear. It's interesting. Julia says it's known for its mysterious place of missing airplanes. And Rumel says it's an area of the Atlantic Ocean where a lot of ships have disappeared. Not have been disappeared there, Rumel. We want to use the present, the, uh, sorry, the active there. So they have disappeared, not have been disappeared. So nobody knows why this happens in particular, but for some reason we get many, many, many ships and planes that disappear in this part of the world. And there are a number of explanations that we're going to talk about. But first, let's have a look at another mystery. So what is this and what's the mystery? What is it? Where is it? Why is it a mystery? And what are some of the theories to explain it? So we can talk about both of these, Stonehenge and the Bermuda Triangle. Where is it? Why is it a mystery? And what are some of the explanations for it? Let's just adjust my camera a little bit. Hello there, Mubraig, Maxamud, how are you doing? Nechel says, airplanes and ships vanish there, that's right. How are you doing, Nechel? Where are you from? There's a big ghost hidden under the Bermuda Triangle, says Yogesh. That is one of the explanations. It's perhaps, excuse me. It's perhaps one of the explanations that I'm not entirely sympathetic with, but it is one of the explanations. So, I'm going to read some information about these mysteries. I want you to listen and type in the chat the information you hear. Type the answers to the questions in the chat. I'm going to read some information about these mysteries and I want you to type the answers to the questions that you hear in the chat. Are you ready? The Bermuda Triangle is a strange area in the Atlantic Ocean. It's between Florida and Puerto Rico. This place is known for many unexplained happenings. Lots of ships and aeroplanes have gone missing here in unusual ways. People have been interested in the Bermuda Triangle for a long time. Some think there are strange natural things happening, like weird magnetic fields. Others have more unusual ideas, like aliens or even hidden cities under the sea. One famous story is about Flight 19. This was a group of five U.S. Navy planes that disappeared in 1945. The pilots got lost and their planes ran out of fuel. Even though many people looked for them, they were never found. A plane that went to find them also disappeared. Now, scientists think there could be normal reasons for these mysteries. They say storms, strong sea currents or mistakes in navigation could explain why ships and planes go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. All right, let's see what we have in the chat there. So 
So the idea there, folks, was to type the answers to those questions while listening. Am I waiting for you to just push the enter key here so I can get those answers in? While you're doing that, I will end our poll for the day. So do you have a coffee or tea? 68% say yes, 31% say no with 75 votes. Manuel, we'll talk about that later. So Anoats, yes, it's in the Atlantic Ocean between Puerto Rico and Florida. Sonia Bottarini says that aliens are the normal reason and the extraordinary reasons are storms and human mistakes. Are you sure there? Did you hear the popular scientific explanations? Sergio says, hello everyone, I'm from Colombia. Hi Sergio, how are you doing? Do you know about the Bermuda Triangle? Low gravity. Let me say it again. Scientists think there could be normal reasons for these mysteries. They say storms, strong sea currents, or mistakes in navigation could explain why ships and planes go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. Did you get that? Mujahid. Hi, Teacher Rich. Am I late? Yes, but don't worry. It's okay. I will be saying this a lot, but we have four streams left and then we are ending live streaming on Oxford Online English. Just four left. So really show your support in these final four streams. And if you want to see more from me, then check out my own channel, which is Prof Rich Teaching, where I stream after this. So when this stream ends, I will stream on my own channel. Join me there. Hello, hello, Rita. How are you doing? So let's talk then about Stonehenge. Listen for the information and type the answers in the chat. Listen for the information and type the answers in the chat. Here we go. Stonehenge is a circle of big stones in Wiltshire, England. It's very old and famous. These stones have been there for more than 5,000 years. But why it was built and how it was done are still not known. The stones at Stonehenge are really big. Some are as heavy as 25 tonnes. It's a mystery how people long ago moved and stood up these stones without modern machines. There are many ideas about Stonehenge. Some people think it was a place for sun worship and others think it was a place to bury important people. Some believe the stones are placed for astronomy they line up with the sunset in winter and the sunrise in summer. Stonehenge is still very important today. Many people visit it, especially when the sun rises 
or sets in line with the stones during the longest and shortest days of the year. All right, let's see what we have in the chat. Hint says, in England, really big. How can it be built without machines? And it aligns up with the sunset or sunrise in summer and winter. Is Stonehenge still a mystery? Yes, Yoga, Stonehenge is still a mystery. Because the stones are very heavy. 25 tons. And the stone comes from hundreds of miles away. Churamani! Namaste. Namaste. Welcome. Smash that like button. And subscribe to my channel as well. Prof Rich Teaching. We'll be streaming in 25 minutes. Who could handle those stones? The big question is, how did they move stones that were 25 tons over 100 miles. Manuel, what is your explanation? You can find the text in the notes for today if you want to look at that. This cannot be explained by current scientific theories. Do you agree or disagree? What do you think about that? This cannot be explained by current scientific theories. Do you agree or disagree? What do you think about that? So Samani says they agree. Stonehenge weighed 500 tons, well, in total, Julia, but each stone is 25 tons. Hello, Mehdi. How are you doing? Sonia agrees. Manuel disagrees. How was it built? How was it built, Manuel? You have the onus of proof. How did they build Stonehenge? Let me try this Q&A. Answer viewer questions live. No way, I'll do that in a minute. Takeshi says, I don't entirely agree. And Mathilde says, hello, I agree. So one explanation is that they used canals with boats and they dig the canal and move it on the boat as they go. That's one explanation. Adnan says, hello, sir. Hello, Adnan. How are you doing today? We're talking about Stonehenge and the Bermuda Triangle. Aliens might be the answer. One of the explanations that a lot of people like is that basically in the past we had more technology than we think. So these societies actually had machinery. However, somehow that technology was lost. That's one of the possibilities. So let's imagine 3,000 years ago there was some sort of technology that we don't have now. Not necessarily the same technology. Maybe they didn't have electricity. They didn't have computers. But maybe they had a water pump machine or 
some sort of tools we don't know about? People really like this explanation. Another possibility is that there was some advanced civilization on Earth with a lot of technology that didn't share it with others, but they did help other civilizations to do things like build Stonehenge. This would be the Atlantis, the city of Atlantis theory. Cameron says there are many things that scientists don't know about. They cannot provide accurate information, for example, about the Egyptian pyramids and the Bermuda Triangle. They just express an opinion. Yes, that's correct, Cameron. Science is just an opinion that's backed up by the scientific method. Science on the whole does tend to have a higher degree of truth than random opinion. This is the Aristotelian tradition of science and logic. But I think it's important that we maintain that science can indeed be questioned. It could be like the pyramids, says Sonia. I like the way you phrase that. Thank you, Sonia. That relates to the lesson that we'll be doing today on Prof. Rich. So make sure you check that out. We'll be talking about past modals for deduction. If you want to amp up your grammar and get a 9.0 in IELTS guaranteed, not guaranteed, then check that out after this. And I'm going to have a coffee to wake myself up. Aristotle invented the lever 2,500 years ago. With levers, it's easy to move huge stones. Do you think so, Manuel? Why has nobody done it? Is there a video on YouTube showing somebody do that? I'd like to see that. Okay, moving on. I have some questions for you. Are there any famous mysteries or legends from your country? So we talked about Stonehenge from England. I'd like you to tell me in the chat, are there any famous mysteries or legends from your country? I think Manuel was talking about La Coronia. <laughs> Manuel is telling a joke about his age. He says, I was living in England in the year 2525, so I could see how they were building the monument. Very good, Manuel. The science in earlier civilizations was more advanced than it is today. I like that theory. Science requires empirical evidence, which makes it believable. Empirical evidence is good, isn't it? But what about rational evidence? Do you think, Takeshi, do you think rational evidence is stronger than empirical evidence? For example, if I use rationality to determine that I exist, which would be, I think... Therefore, I exist. Therefore, I exist as a thing which thinks. This is rationality. Can we say that is more true than the statement, all cats have a tail? How do I know all cats have a tail? Because I have empirical evidence. I have seen one cat, two cat, three cats, a hundred cats. And so I declare... All cats have a tail. Which statement is more true? All cats have a tail or I think, therefore I exist. This is empiricism and rationalism. And they are not the only ways of getting truth, are they? There's another way of getting truth. You know, folks... We got four streams left on Oxford Online English. We will be ending the free classes on Oxford Online English. So let me take this moment to go a bit off script. Let's talk about the third way of finding truth. So way number one, empiricism. You observe and from your observations you find Rules to shape the world. Number two. You use rationality 
to determine what rules are true in the world and then you check those rules against your experience and then the third way We examine our subjective experience, not in a rational way, but in an experiential way, in an attempt to experience ultimate truth. Is, is anyone freaking out? <laughs> so... I want to know, are there any famous mysteries or legends from your country? And there's some other questions there for you to discuss in the chat. We'll talk together about these and I'll give them numbers to make it a little bit easier to follow what everybody's talking about. Please do write the number for the question which you are talking about. Write the number for the question which you are talking about. So we all know which question you're talking about. Jelena says, greetings from Lithuania. Thank you for your perfect lectures. That's a very nice thing to say, Jelena. Feel free to make any other comments in the chat. We're moving on to question time in a minute. So if you have any questions about English or life in general, then go right ahead. Cabeça de Velo, says Matilde, in Mozambique, Africa. Cabeça de Velo. Is that head of what's Velo? Cabeça de Velo. Ooh, it's a natural rock that looks a bit like a head. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that looks great. <clears throat> Wait, in Mozambique, Africa? For me, it's coming up with Portugal. Oh, there's another Cabeça de Velo. <laughs> it seems like the Cabeça de Velo, I guess it's head of rock or something is uh something that happens in several places that's really cool though i like the one in africa that comes out the ground <laughs> that's great wow that's a natural mystery not a man-made mystery Thank you very much there for the shout out, Anawat. Do appreciate it. I need a coffee, folks. My energy is super chill at the moment. You know why? It's really cold. It's really cold in England. We're below zero. It's freezing. I'm desperately trying to stay warm and failing. I've never visited Morocco, actually. I wanted to when I lived in Spain. I never quite got there. All right, folks. So this is the countdown to the end. Live streams are ending on Oxford Online English. Here are the dates for the final streams. Next week, I'll be doing winter poetry. I know how you all love poetry. So there you go. We're doing that. Get on it. Poetry is great. Then, 23rd, the Christian in Christmas. We're going to talk about Christianity and Christmas. Every time someone does an English lesson on Christmas, they do International Christmas or Pagan Christmas or whatever, and I'm going to book the trend 
And we're going to talk about Christianity and Christmas. So the Christian Christmas, the birth, a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Let's go for it on the 23rd. And then on the 30th is my final stream on Oxford Online English. Goodbye, but not farewell. So please be there for that. That will be kind of quite an informal stream. And if you want to continue to follow me, you can do youtube.com slash Professor Rich. That is where you will find me in future. So join me there. I do two streams a week, high quality material, Wednesdays and Saturdays. So do get on to that, folks. And we're on to question time. You can, of course, download the notes from today, as you can for all of our brilliant classes there on Oxford Online English. If you have any questions about learning English or anything in general, then type that in the class. I'm just going to try this. I've never done this before. Uh, ask any questions you have about learning English. Let's try this. <sighs> Q&A mode. I'm not sure that I like this. We're now, we're now in Q&A mode. Let's see how this works. If it works, I'll use this in future. Merry Christmas, Manuel, said Manuel's neighbours, but they don't say anything the rest of the year. Well, Manuel, I mean, the positive side of that is they say something at least in Christmas. Because... Because... At least they say it then. I mean, in England, people barely even say Merry Christmas. So if people say Merry Christmas at Christmas, well, it's better than nothing. Let's take our wins where we can. Uh, Samani, how can I join your lesson? Go to the link, Samani. I posted it in the chat. Posted it like three times now. I don't want to overdo it. It's there in the chat. YouTube.com slash Professor Rich, I'm learning English, but I cannot continue and be disciplined. That is a good question. So, let's talk about that. That's my first question of the day. I cannot be listening. I cannot be disciplined. How do we deal with this? So, number one, you need some discipline. But consider that the most important step is always the first one. So examples. Examples of this in practice are starting to learn something new. Starting to attend classes. Starting a study session for the day, starting a new book in English, etc. So really, your discipline only needs to apply for the first one. Your discipline only needs to apply for the first one. Because after that, you just keep going, right? You just keep going. Now, advice number two with this. Do the things you love. Okay. Read the books you love, but in English. Watch the TV series you love, but in English. Do your favorite hobbies in an international setting with English as the lingua franca, which means the language you use to communicate. 
And this is a way of subverting the need for discipline. All right. All right, let's move on to our next question, because we do have a few questions. It seems that this Q&A thing is working. Palavi, will you ever retire from YouTube or will you ever end your lessons? Um, yes, but probably not for a long time. <laughs> so I do intend to continue on my channel, youtube.com slash Professor Reach, for a long time to come. Thank you for the question, Palavi. Moving on. Next question. Can I say, like, the question's answered? Oh, I can select questions. Select question. How can I improve my English vocabulary? So, I have many videos about this on my channel. Um, the first thing to do is understand the difference between passive and active vocabulary and understand how to learn each. So passive vocabulary are the words and phrases which you understand. Active vocabulary are the words and phrases which you use in writing or speaking. To learn passive vocabulary, you don't need to do anything. You just need input that you understand. So, if you understand what I'm saying right now, you are improving your passive vocabulary just by listening. Active vocabulary is different. In order to improve active vocabulary, you must engage. So you must get a vocabulary notebook. But the key with your vocabulary notebook is take a note of the phrases you wish to use. It's not about what you understand. It's about what you want to use. Take note of the things that you want to use. So whether you understand it or not is not important. Well, it is important, but it's not the critical issue with vocabulary note taking. The critical issue is what do you want to use? Write it down, make a personalized example, and then say it out loud with natural pronunciation. Example. This is the best way to... This is the best way to learn English. This is the best way to learn English. This is the best way to learn English. Here's a good phrase. Prof. Rich shows us the best way to learn English. There's a personalized example, and then say it out loud with natural pronunciation. Prof. Rich shows us the best way to learn English. The best way to, 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 the best way to. The best way to learn English. What's the best way to learn English? What's the best way to learn English? What's the best way to become a chef? What's the best way to travel? What's the best way to travel Japan? What's the best way to get in shape? What's the best way for a 78-year-old to begin learning a new language? Okay. There you go. Next. Could you please clarify the difference between it's raining and it has been raining? Really? It is raining now. It was raining recently and may or may not. Wait, it has been raining. It has been being. No, wait, it has been raining. It has rained. It's rained. It's rained. It's been raining. 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 It's not be finished, yeah. May or may not be finished yet. We don't need to say recently. 
It's been raining. It was raining in the past and may or may not be finished. From the context of talking about the weather, I understand that you mean recently. So I hope that helps. Next. Cameron says, I'm learning English. I can speak, but my listening is not good. What's your advice for improving this? Uh, my advice is go to youtube.com slash Professor Rich and subscribe immediately. <laughs> That's youtube.com slash Professor Rich. Uh, subscribe and that'll help you with your listening, okay? Uh, but uh, more seriously, what you should do is listen to stuff you like listening to. Listen to audiobooks of stories you enjoy. Listen to radio on, on, on podcasts. Listen to podcasts. Listen to podcasts on Spotify for topics which you like. Improve your listening by listening. As weird as that sounds. Just make sure that the input is comprehensible. It must be comprehensible input. That means you must understand the input. If you understand it and you enjoy it, that's it. Just do it. Do it. Do it again, again, again. That's all you need. Uh, Plavi says, please keep teaching us. Will do. Is it necessary to learn phrasal verbs to improve communication skills? Ooh, that's a good one. Is it necessary to learn phrasal verbs to improve communication skills? Uh, no. However, it is useful. And can be fun. But it is not necessary. You do not need phrasal verbs. You do not need phrasal verbs. But they're okay sometimes, right? Pick up, get up. I need, I'm going to get up at five o'clock tomorrow. Can you can you pick up my kids from school? <laughs> Some phrasal verbs are fun. And phrasal verbs can be very useful for learning connected speech. Learning natural speech can be quite fun. Hello, Max Ahmed, how are you? Uh, Sirajani, you should post in the Q&A section... But since you haven't, what's the difference? What is Teacher Rich like? What does Teacher Rich look like? Oh, oh, oh interesting. Spoke about this recently. Um, yeah. So it's very simple, actually, with this one. So maybe we should add a third one in, which is what does Teacher Rich like? And we can even add, how is Teacher Rich? Let's add that as well. So we can have all of the fun. All of the fun. All right. So number one, what is Teacher Rich like? That is asking about personality and maybe appearance. So personality and appearance. Personality and appearance. What is Teacher Rich like? Personality and appearance. What does Teacher Rich look like? That is only appearance. We're not talking about personality when we say, what does Teacher Rich look like? Just appearance. What does Teacher Rich like? Here we're talking about likes. What food does he like? What animals does he like? What hobbies does he like? And how is Teacher Rich? We're talking about is he good or bad? Or even how does he feel? There's another possibility. So there's our four different possibilities there. What is Teacher Rich like? Personality and appearance. What does Teacher Rich look like? Is appearance. What does Teacher Rich like? Is likes. And how is Teacher Rich? Is he good or bad? I hope that helps. Uh, 
Uh, are podcasts more useful than videos for listening comprehension? No. They're not. They are both basically... There's, there's, there's no difference, really, Rennie. The more important is the topic. Is it comprehensible? Are you interested? What's the speaker like? That's more important. But the difference in media is unimportant. One thing I will say is that videos add more context. So with videos you have more context, you have visual context in order to help you to understand. So that makes videos easier. Makes it easier. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me today. There are three streams left by me on Oxford Online English, and I think Carrie also has three. So make sure that you check out my channel where I will continue teaching Wednesdays and Saturdays forever. And in the meantime, celebrate the end of an era here on Oxford Online English. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today and I hope to see you in 10 minutes on youtube.com slash Professor Rich. Thank you very much for joining me, folks. Smash that like button. Do subscribe if you haven't already. If you're looking for a private teacher with Oxford Online English, you go to OxfordOnlineEnglish.com and you can get the best quality online teachers there. Better than the British Council online teachers, in my opinion. Better than any of the silly websites with all kinds of people from all over the world without teaching qualifications trying to teach languages. Oxford Online English has very highly experienced and qualified teachers. Check it out, OxfordOnlineEnglish.com. And join me talking about past modals, youtube.com slash Professor Rich. Get there right now, and I'll catch you later. Have a lovely weekend, folks. I'll see you in five minutes. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Wait, bye-bye now? How do I end streams, everybody? <laughs>